Aloha and welcome back to Live at the Legislature. I'm the Senate's <coughs> Communications Director, Jesse Broder Van Dyke. My guest this week is Senator Clarence Nishihara, Chair of the Public Safety, Intergovernmental, and Military Affairs Committee. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you and good morning and aloha to those aloha. who are watching. Um, as yeah, Chair, go, oh, ahead. go ahead, Senator. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, as chair of the Public Safety Committee, um, you expressed concerns when the Senate Judiciary, uh, the, Senate, the state judiciary, announced that it would begin releasing prisoners before the end of their sentences to reduce the prison population to avoid spreading COVID-19. Some of those prisoners have gone on to commit additional crimes and be rearrested. Uh, wh what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think none of us are happy over the fact that we had people who were released and. Uh, as a result of the concerns about COVID-19 being um, spread in the prison system. But I think it was a Supreme Court decision that um, started it going. It was a ruling that, uh, that certain uh, inmates, and depending on their condition of, of their incarceration, would be released because they provided a lower level of, of uh, of a problems to the community. Unfortunately, we had 47 uh, inmates that have since committed crimes and now are back in prison. So anyway, uh, maybe the public doesn't understand exactly what kind of people were supposedly going to be released. Uh, the Supreme Court requested that inmates put a short term sentences anywhere from a year to 18 months who has a condition of probation uh, and serving district court sentences were convicted of petty misdemeanors and misdemeanors. I also included pretrial detainees who hadn't uh, gone to court yet. And also um, what they considered high risk inmates that were had medical problems. And so um, also the district and family court circuit courts were not were told to vacate or not bring up the bench warrants that some of these people would have received otherwise, and, and not to issue any new bench warrants. So they won't be appearing in courts and consequently won't be held in prison or jails, right? So, so that was the situation. And unfortunately, we had a situation where um, 47, 47 inmates, uh, once they were released, committed either new misdemeanors or possible felonies and we're now back in prison again. And some were, um, I guess they were felonies because they included um, assault and some other things. So there was a concern from the police departments, uh, the heads of the police departments on all the islands, uh -huh. as well as the one from HPD. Uh, our um, Chief of Police Susan Ballard yeah. expressed her yeah. concern. Yeah. Yeah, I know and a lot so, of people are concerned about the situation. Yeah, so I think, you know, they were rightfully, they should be concerned. And so they're, they're taking another review of what happened with the almost 850 that were released. So they won't, right now there's a freeze on it. So they're not releasing anymore until they review that. And hopefully what will come out of that is that maybe a better, analysis of who they let go and well thank you for keeping attention on that issue yeah. yeah thank you so much i know a lot of people have been concerned about that another big concern is uh, unemployment and your district waipahu has the fourth highest rate of unemployment across the state uh, how is that affecting your constituents out there well you know as as we know um it was reported in the paper that waipahu was the second highest um unemployment claims, mm -hmm. uh, then it was followed by Lahaina. So mm -hmm. when you look at Lahaina and Waipahu and some of the other areas that were noted, there were areas where um, a fair number of people work for the hotels. So not surprisingly, with the hotels shut down, that there would be unemployment because people will not be employed. Uh, but you know, because of that, it, cre it creates other problems, as we all know. The long lines of people waiting to get food. And also, I 
I guess their concerns about getting medical treatment if they need it. So these are the kinds of things, the um, outcome of what happened with the, the COVID pandemic and it's um, as it spreads out through the community, businesses can operate. And so what you have here is that um, in the fourth quarter, about 220,000 jobs um, were lost. Mm -hmm. Uhero, University of Hawaii um, Economic uh, mm -hmm. Research Organization, which we get a lot of our data from, they're hoping that by um, by the end of the fourth quarter, maybe half of those numbers, 110,000, will be back reemployed. Uh, but they believe that the unemployment rate will remain in the double digits well into 2020, and that's probably not surprising. Um, the local firms um, have a more uh, optimistic outcome would be that if we can take care of the problems of the COVID, which has to do with contact tracing, social isolation, mm -hmm. wearing your masks and other efforts um, that to spread the virus, then those businesses can um, anticipate uh, when the public feels it's safe for them to go to the restaurants, to go to um, other businesses, then maybe slowly the economy will start coming back. As we see what happened when they opened up the beaches, there were people who didn't follow those procedures and created new problems. So you can see why under the part, on the part from the Department of Health and others, that perhaps if we open up too quickly and we allow um, these large uh, increases of public, that we may have a resurgence of the virus. And I think that's all of our concerns. Across the nation, they've had states that have opened up uh, their economies quite a bit. Some have allowed um, businesses to operate. They have allowed large crowds to come, especially at the beaches. And then we have real problems. And so, and they have real problems. Mm -hmm. well, and there's been a research in some of those. Yeah, well, well, one sign of progress we have had in Hawaii is uh, additional testing capacity. And in the first weeks and months, we learned that a lot of the tests were not accurate. Now we have antibody tests and things like that. You, unfortunately, were one of the people who got a false positive test. But we since learned that it was incorrect and you passed the antibody tests and no one else at the Capitol or none of your family got infected. So I'm so sorry you had to go through that. That must have been difficult. Well, it was because, you know, when when uh, when you're told that you have it and you have no way of saying otherwise, um, it's only with the, um, the introduction of the antibody uh, test uh, to see if or not you had the antibodies in your system as a result of contracting the COVID virus. Um, I had three antibody tests done. Uh, one, the first one was done by Dr. Miskovich's, and that was the one I think they had some question about its uh, validity. That's the one with a little strip that they, uh -huh. you know, put a little drop of blood on. That came back negative. And then I had two others done by um, the clinical labs did one, and they also they collect more blood actually in a, in vials, and that showed negative. And the last one was uh, I was hopeful that. I would have had the antibodies because the blood bank was looking for people who had uh -huh. plasma that uh -huh. that perhaps had the antibodies. But when they sent it out to Florida to be tested, again, they sent in their sample of blood. It turned also to be negative. So the conclusion of all of that with three negatives, I would assume that, that I didn't have it, yeah. which is well, why I'm so nobody glad else got it. Yes. I'm glad well, I'm you so didn't glad. get it either. I'm glad yes, you're all too. healthy. Yes, and but, I'm so sorry you had to go through all that, but I'm so happy that you're okay. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you for your concern because I got a lot of emails from people who are concerned about my health, and uh, yep. I think I think it's important that those who are tested positive and show the antibodies are able to donate their blood to those who are needing it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to uh, to try to do that. And uh, we're so lucky to be in Hawaii right now. We have a relatively low rate of infection. And thank you so much, Senator, for joining me this morning. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on Live at the Legislature. Aloha. Thank you.